South Africa is a wonderful destination. We start off in Cape Town and go through to Johannesburg and see quite a lot in between. Yeah, cover the melting pot in between. It's a wonderful location. The history of apartheid and the story that comes with that and, and Nelson Mandela's story, which is certainly also a core part of the tour. We visit Robben Island and it's a big start to the tour. We've got a lot of great riding in between Cape Town and Joburg. Some fantastic mountain passes, beautiful scenery. I love those coastal roads around Cape Town. Yeah. Uh, there's some fantastic riding around there, isn't there? Yeah, we head right down to the southernmost point, which is not only the southernmost point of South Africa, but the entire African continent, of course. We head west and go along the garden route. We go through Lesotho, which is the kingdom in the sky. It's a very high raised plateau above the rest of the flat South African plain. Taking in the Sani Pass to get there, don't forget the, the Sani, Sani Pass. pass. The, Sani pass. <laughs> the very adventurous Sani Pass. Tests a few people out, it's quite a rocky and challenging little mountain pass, we've had some fun on there. And I don't know about you guys, but Cape Town was actually quite a surprise for me. It's a beautiful city. Yeah, it was, was different to what I was expecting. It actually reminded me a little bit of, of Auckland in a kind of sailing city down by the waterfront. Very, very, very pretty. To me, one of the attractions of South Africa was that it was actually very much like home. It didn't feel like a greatly foreign mm. country, yeah. but then you turn around and it's suddenly a very foreign country. It's got that beautiful balance of both. Mm. Yes. I, I know what you mean when you say it's a bit like home. Mm. Fantastic food, some excellent wines, South African wines, who hasn't heard how good they are. And some uh, exquisite little experiences along the way. And then you've got that cultural balance with visiting the Zulu people, for example, which is not something that you can do in, in Australia or New Zealand. And of course, at the end of the tour, we have a big highlight. Our visit to Kruger National Park at the end of the tour is certainly a, a massive highlight of our experience awesome wildlife and we get up close and personal and I think it's one of those travelling memories that stays with you for the rest of life, you know, having intimate interactions with uh, rhino and hippo. One of the benefits of staying very close to Kruger National Park is we can be up very early in the morning and we do a dawn safari ride where you get to see not only the big five, the famous big five animals, but a whole bunch of other animals as well. There's a, a lot of wildlife experiences in this park. I've got to say, I went to South Africa expecting that I was going on a motorcycle ride and that the motorcycling was going to be it, yeah. and it was, but then they add the wildlife. Mm. And when the wildlife comes into it, mm. it just takes it to another level. It's absolutely unbelievable. Mm. You see it on David Attenborough and everything, but when you see it in the flesh, yeah, it's very different. Very special, isn't it? Yeah, very, it almost is. indescribable experience. And I think too, Mick, the other highlight for me, the other standout, are some of the places that we stay along the way. South Africa and our South African tour is one of those places where we get to stay in some very special lodges and special landscapes with incredibly expansive, beautiful views. They're really quite breathtaking. They all have their own individual character, don't they? There's no one yeah, place absolutely. that's quite the same. The national speed limit in South Africa is 120 kilometres an hour. Now we're not talking dual carriageway, we're talking ordinary highways. So those of us who enjoy a twist of the wrist on the BMWs can take advantage of the very realistic speed limits that they have in that particular country. Yeah, and up away from the coast, there's a lot of long stretches that we get to really open up on the bike and really enjoy that speed limit. Yeah. The fleet of bikes you've got too is quite varied, uh, so there's a lot of range of choice isn't there? Absolutely, again our bike supplier is a BMW only shop but he offers us the full range of GS models. Yeah I had an R1200 GS for two up through South Africa and I couldn't have imagined a better bike. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, beautiful roads, beautiful landscapes, yeah. come and do it. The Beam is a good bike for that landscape. Absolutely.